Welcome back to the channel. I'm Joe Potter and this is the Vintage Underground. It's been a while since we've done a walk around, so I thought we'd go through the shop and see what's working. All right, we'll start out here in the paint booth. Uh, this uh, was uh, shot just uh, last night. This is a base coat uh, black. And this car is a uh, 52 uh, Seata, Diana. And it uh, is actually a car that we restored about, oh, I think about five or six years ago. Uh, that the new owner wanted a, a, a color change done on. Uh, pretty simple car, um, so relatively easy to take down and uh, get down to where we could uh, do the paint. So base coat's on. Uh, it is actually two colors. Uh, along the bottom will be uh, kind of an oxblood uh, red, um, so they uh, still have to do that. But this uh, coming along, so, so it's good. Move on. So we end up... Doing a lot of engines, of course, um, in, uh, in the course of doing builds, and uh, we what, what we work on is pretty varied. So we, uh, a lot of different uh, uh, anything from MGs to American V8s to you know Jags and Maseratis and whatnot. Um, happens to be a couple of American cars here. Um, the uh, big one here is a 440 Chrysler out of a Jensen Interceptor. Uh, that's a full build. And this happens to be a small block uh, Ford uh, for the uh, AC Asica build, which is obviously not supposed to have that V8, but it's going to now. But anyway, do a lot of that where we paint engines, and we we do them in the paint booth. Uh, they're not rattle canned or anything like that. It's they're done with two stage um, professional automotive paints, and we're, it's just so much more durable with catalyzed paint on an engine. So, all right, let's go through the body shop here. So this uh, little uh, Fiat 500, um, this one's really close. Uh, Ryan's just about done. It'll be handed off to the finishing guys and prepared for the booth. Uh, as we go through the cars here, you'll see we have several of them um, just really close to being ready to go into the booth. Uh, so it'll go through to the finishing guys and uh, into the booth. So obviously the metal work's all done, and there was a lot of it. Um, and all the, all the body work's done. It's just the finished blocking. Uh, that'll take place now. It'll probably get primered one more time and then uh, and blocked uh, uh, one more time. So that was just about ready. Um, the owner of this car is a woman, and um, she's picked the colors, uh, and it's kind of a purple. And it's going to be, and she's picked all the colors for the interior. It's, it's really going to pop. It's going to be pretty cool. Oh, let me show you, too. Wheels came in today. For it, which is kind of cool. These are actually uh, actual Baranis made for a Fiat 500. Really <laughs> cool little wheel. It's a 12 inches, just awesome. So, this little car, this little Fiat is going to have a lot of bling which is pretty cool. Okay, we'll keep going there. Uh, this <clears throat> this uh, uh, Healy 104, um, it's just been uh, prepped. Uh, it's just about ready to go into the, I think it's going into the booth as soon as the Seata is done. And we'll paint this part of it because um, then we can build up from there because car is going white. Um, so anyway, uh, same kind of the same thing as the Fiat, as uh, finished blocking, and obviously not as intense on a on a chassis like this as opposed to a body. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, finish work to do, and that'll go into the paint booth. And um, at that point, we can kind of start building the car and then paint pieces as we go up. Uh, these are these go together like a puzzle. Um, they're kind of a pain in the butt, actually. Uh, these giant wings um, are off of this uh, Bentley, this Darby Bentley. <clears throat> and all this, uh, the wings here, uh, here uh, is the bonnet. Uh, this is one of the uh, rear doors. All this for a color change. And, and of course, we got into it and found um, some issues. 
So that's a lot of effort to uh, for just a color change, but it's how it has to be done. And this one too is just about ready to be handed off to the finishing folks and um, prepped for the booth. Uh, Tim's got 95% uh, of the body work done and uh, it'll get finished and uh, into the paint booth. <clears throat> this thing was painted a really garish uh, purple and cream colored. It was, hor it was horrendous. Anyway, uh, the <clears throat> customer is going back with a, um, oh, I think kind of a, uh, a soft uh, green. Um, we're still kind of working with them on colors on that. Uh, it's a body, it's, it's really kind of an exotic body with some really cool shapes on it and got to be careful with the color if you go too harsh or too bright it can actually make it look silly again so it, it really needs to be a rich uh, color so we're working with them on that we almost got that going so this one's almost ready for the booth <clears throat> uh, Maserati Mistral uh, this one we've been working on um, it's down to the bare chassis car had rust in it um, pretty bad so you can see a lot of, just a lot of missing metal. The more you look at it, the more there is missing. But these are very handmade cars. If you you look at these things, they're just stitched together with pieces. And they look, you know, very, all this, this is all, this is all factory, just loosely stitched. And there's a lot of rust, a lot of cancer down in here. And the, the way these are designed, or well, not, not put together, I would be, a better way to say it. The way these are put together uh, really is a lot of a lot of spaces and a lot of hidden areas that will trap uh, dirt and moisture, and that's what they did. Um, you can see there's a gaping hole right up in here, um, leading into the rocker, and the rocker is just blown. Uh, it's just full of uh, rot. I mean, all this will have to be replaced. All this and there's a pillar up in here. It's it's a bit of a mess. So. These are very cool cars. They're very handmade. Um, and if you look at the structure and the way it's built, these are it's alloy skins over this structure. And this structure is not very heavy. They're actually light and you know very well built um, cars. This is actually a very strong structure. Unlike Ferrari or and others, there's no central chassis here. Uh, if you look at a Ferrari per, uh, you know, of this era, you have the two elliptical shaped main um, frame rails that run fore and aft. Uh, and this doesn't have that. This is more of a boxed uh, uh, section build, which is really cool. So I really like these cars. They're uh, lightweight. I, I like the size of them. They're, the size of them. They're they're smaller than uh, uh, the contemporary uh, big Ferraris in, of the era. Um, motors are incredibly torquey, and, and the combination of that and a lightweight car, these cars should be worth a lot more than they are. You can see on this side, uh, the rocker is just completely gone, uh, has been removed, and then all the debris on the floor. So, and here it is in a box. Uh, so, including the B pillar. So all that will get uh, strengthened, redone. Uh, this is a 330 Ferrari. Um, this is one of the uh, cars that was in a um, garage fire. And so I don't take insurance work unless it belongs to uh, Haggerty. And this is what Haggerty asked us to do this one. So it's not a restoration. It's uh, the paint got damaged. A little bit of the interior and the rear glass, so we're repainting the car and um, doing a little bit of work to bring it back up to what it was. Uh, the car you can see was painted a pretty harsh red, and you can also see in here where it gets kind of more rich and kind of a deeper red, which is the original color. And the owner, when we saw this, um, was up for going back to the original color. My opinion, these big Ferraris don't look good in, in harsh colors. Um, they need to be toned down um, with uh, a little more rich colors. Um, they, it makes them look garish. And I, I you know Ferrari would paint them whatever you wanted them painted, but most of these big ones 
tended to be painted in richer colors because uh, just because of that. So this one actually is also just about ready to go in. There's some final priming and blocking to do, but this one is really, really close uh, to going into the booth uh, as well. Um, another engine uh, we've got to uh, we've got to paint. So this is real typical. These are a, engines can be a real pain uh, to prep and uh, for paint. So um, depending on what's supposed to be painted and what's and what's not, um, if you take for instance like a, a Healy, when Healy did production on their engines, they fully assembled the engines with wires and everything, and they just sprayed everything. And so what, what is technically correct is a really sloppy way of painting them, but that's not true of most other manufacturers. There was actually quite a bit of differentiation and detail uh, in the color. Let's keep going here. This is a uh, record Monza, an Abarth. Um, this car is currently having, uh, uh, we're remaking all the aluminum skins, um, probably 80% of them. Uh, will be replaced. It had been uh, it had been modified in its life and with cutouts for flares and and stuff. And the aluminum just did not survive well, along with the normal corrosion that that comes with it. And it has, uh, like all of them, a little bit of rust uh, problems here and there. Not bad. Um, this car is actually pretty tidy. Um, these little cars can be horrific, uh, kind of like the Maserati. They're hand built, and uh, you can still you can see all the hand assembly here. All these individual little panels just stitched together with holes in between. This was never seam sealed or anything like that, so they're just water traps and dirt traps, and that, and it makes rust. This one's actually pretty good. They can be they can be horrific, uh, and and the rust underneath the aluminum, and not to mention the corrosion, uh, disintegration of the aluminum itself. So um, we've got a few repairs to make uh, metal-wise in here, and uh, then it'll um, it'll get finished, um, and then he'll final uh, he'll final fit uh, the uh, the new uh, aluminum skins to it. And at that point, we can uh, paint the car and come back up. So uh, this is a uh, Mercedes uh, 190 SL. Um, it's just in the blocking phase, and it's kind of sitting for the moment because we're stacked up with several cars to push into the booth. This one's about 80% ready, um, and it's almost ready to hand off to the finishing guys. So it's waiting in queue right now. A uh, Lotus uh, Elite. Now, this is a car we bought uh, at an auction uh, in the Midwest. And it had been sitting in a collection for a lot of years and it hadn't been used. And so we had to kind of resurrect it. It was a restored car, but it had been sitting way too long. We ended up having to do the cooling system, the fuel system, um, uh, suspension bushings, uh, anything that deteriorates from just sitting in time. Um, and then we uh, put it up for sale and, and we did sell it. And uh, um, a gentleman out of Colorado bought it. And he's having us now prep the car to run on the Colorado Grand. And so, you know, what's that mean if you're selling a car that's fully capable and to run and drive? Uh, well, how do you, what do you got to do to prepare it? Well, these tours uh, nowadays are, are are pretty grueling. They're a thousand miles, um, a lot of elevation change, and they can be, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of car failures. And so... You just go at it from a different angle. So we're making some uh, changes to the car, some upgrades, some hidden things um, to make it uh, really uh, stable and dependable. Um, when you prep a car, you kind of have to know what the intent is. Um, if we know the intent is to do these thousand mile hard rallies, we go at it from a different angle. And so it's been kind of fun because we got to prep the car and now we get to prep it for the to run on, on the Grand, which is going to be um, really cool. This is a, these are fun cars and this would actually be a fun choice to do, uh, on, on tours. Uh, they are right hand drive, or at least this one is. And, um, which is a little bit odd, uh, if you're not used to it, but once you get used to it, especially on a small car, it doesn't matter so much. So. 
So just a simple uh, MGA Roadster. Um, this is a family car. Um, it's been in the family. It was her father's. Uh, and we're just, it, well, like a lot of cars, it, something went wrong and it got put away and all of a sudden 30 years went by. And so you have to undo that. And they want to preserve what the car is. They don't want to fully restore it. And because if you're going to do that, you know, you, you lose all contact with what the car was and who owned it. So the, the original paint will stay inside the engine compartment. We'll preserve as much of the interior as we can. We're doing a full mechanical build. All the suspension, the tra transmission, the engine, the rear end, the brakes, uh, hydraulics, uh, electrical system, all that will be replaced. But the car will kind of essentially look like it did when her father drove it. And that's kind of the goal. We, we, do, we do this more often than you would think, um, trying to preserve these cars, because it's just a way to stay in contact with the history of the car. I, I, I honor that. I think it's pretty cool. So. Tucked in here kind of tight is a, a pre-war MG. This is an N-Type. This is a six-cylinder car. These are actually uh, pretty cool little cars. Uh, Pre-war MGs uh, are really um, cool machines. Uh, and then the earlier stuff like this and the you know, PA, the PB, and then the big ones, the big sixes. And they're just very cool. Um, a lot more exotic, if you will, than the post-war stuff was. And that was just, you know, by necessity. I mean, the world changed and you know, different cars came out the other end. Really cool. Um, it's kind of hard to see in this dark in here, but the interior on these are, are kind of sculpted. And a lot of this is a tuck and roll and some interesting designs. They're really, I don't want to say exotic, but they're really um, just kind of cool and uh, comfortable. Uh, the TC was the only thing that had post-war, um, that kind of still had elements of these uh, pre-war cars. And that's mostly because the TC was designed pre-war. Uh, and they just built it. They started building it after uh, after the war was over because they didn't have anything else. That was kind of the end of that this era, this feel of uh, MGs. Just a Jag uh, XJS. Uh, it's just one of our customers bought this car. It's a low miles car, twelve thousand miles. Uh, we did a five speed conversion on it, and he's got some miles on it now. So we're um, just doing some uh, uh, some finish work on that. So. Here are, we've had these cars before, and we've talked about them before. We've got two AC Asikas. Um, this is a, an original car. This is, this, uh, is out of California. Um, this is a conversion. Uh, this is, had a small block V8 put in it um, many, many years ago. And um, we're doing some finish work on the doors and some other things. But mostly it's here to provide us a pattern for that one. So this is a uh, an Asika. We've talked about this car before, um, but it's a build. I mean, this is an Asika chassis, uh, but it's all new from here back. Uh, this car was modified uh, early on in the 60s um, with a Cobra rear setup and front end setup. We found several chunks of Cobra on this car and the owner has tracked it down to one missing Cobra uh, that was in California that was crashed and totaled um, right at the same time. So they're confident that the remains of that car, somebody welded into this chassis. Um, so no way to undo it. It's done. Um, but it kind of makes for a cool little build here. Um, with this, uh, this Asika does actually have actual uh, Cobra, original Cobra components in it. Um, so we're finishing it out. It has a, it was converted uh, many years ago as well to uh, a V8, um, and the owner wants to continue with that. Uh, so we're going to end up with a really cool um, hardtop Cobra. Um, it's got a, a Tremec. Uh, TKO 500 uh, trans, a small block Ford, and we're just in the middle of the of the build. Um, you know, we had, we had to fabricate a fuel tank, and and 
as soon as you start doing things where you're not just dead stock and you're doing a build, of course, it gets more complicated because everything has to interact. Um, and that's what we're doing. Um, we're building uh, a complete new structure. This is not done yet. We've got, uh, it looks whole, but it's actually just kind of mocked up. Uh, we've got the footwells uh, where we want them. We're working on laying in where the tunnel will land on the floor uh, to cover the uh, transmission. Starting to place components, uh, starting to place the battery. Uh, of course, we've got we've upgraded the uh, the steering, so uh, we're starting to place components in here to um, um, so we can make a car of it and kind of have everything in place really before you start putting skins on and that kind of stuff. Um, like I say, if it was a if it was a just a restoration, it'd be a different thing, but it's more of a build than anything else. Um, so you really got to think your way through it uh, piece by piece. This is fun. Uh, there's the nose right there. Uh, the nose is sitting here, the rear section sitting over there. And the reason that is, is that those have been roughed out, as you can see, that they're not metal finished yet. And the reason is because we have to keep setting them off and uh, on the car um, to t uh, test fitment. So that's just uh, how it goes. Uh, I'm sorry. A Jag 3.8S. Uh, this is a car we've done uh, a lot of work on, and uh, a customer got some miles on it, and now it's back in. It had a little leak, uh, a couple other little things, um, and we're sorting that. So um, I think it's about ready to go back out again. We did the uh, interior on this one, which just uh, came out stunning. I love these. I love the big interiors on these Jags and these couch-like uh, seats. Did the whole dash, all the wood in the dash. It was uh, painted. It wasn't a uh, full restoration. It was uh, a car that was in reasonable shape, and we just upgraded it to kind of get, bring it up, up to standard. Uh, Ferrari 330. Uh, this is a full restoration. Um, the other, the other 330 we have is a, like I said, is a recovery from a garage fire. This is a full out restoration, um, and the build's pretty far along here. Um, when you're assembling like this, it kind of depends on the car a little bit, but you try to get as much as you can into the car before you have to put in uh, big chunks. Because once you get the big chunks like the engine or the trans or suspension or those kinds of things, it becomes more awkward to work around them. So what he's doing here now is laying in the wiring harness. Probably one of the first things you do if you can is get a harness into it because the wiring harness tends to go everywhere. And if you're fighting over uh, large obstacles, it makes it difficult. So he's he's got um, um, uh, hydraulics run. He's got electrical roughed in. Um, he's got he's starting to get plumbing roughed in, um, and now he's got the he's got the front suspicion. Uh, now he's got the front suspension uh, going in. Um, so you just kind of start working your way through systems. Uh, it's sitting on the rotisserie now because it makes it easy to rotate it and do things underneath. Um, as you can kind of start to see the the dash coming together here with the roughed in wiring. The uh, rear suspension is not in, and at some point here, we'll have to put it on the lift and take it down off the rotisserie and put the rear suspension in it and set it on its feet. We'll delay that as far as long as we can because it's a lot more convenient to build like this. The fuel tank has to go in uh, up inside here before the rear suspension goes in, so that's going to be that's going to be a uh, a big step. Um, and that'll change how we how the build goes uh, from from that because we'll be obviously be off of the rotisserie at that point. The trunk's already been fitted, um, so upholstery has already fitted the carpets with the correct uh, uh, carpets in the rear, and still finishing it, uh, that out. So when you're assembling something like this, there's it's just kind of a uh, balancing game of of who works on it, uh, you know, because 
chunks of the interior need to go in at lesser point, uh, lesser um, levels of uh, assembly. And uh, what you don't want to do is uh, create situations where you put something together and then have to back up because upholstery didn't get a chance to get in there or something like that. So the the engine is uh, sitting here. It's ready to go. It's been run on the engine dyno. Uh, and what's uh, going on now is all of the uh, uh, wrinkle finish pieces are off of the engine and out being wrinkle finished and, and any final plating or anything like that. We don't do that stuff when we build the motor. It's all obviously perfectly clean, but um, when we're running it on the engine dyno, we don't worry about that. It's just a way to scratch things. So once it's fully proven and it's a motor and it's good to go, we'll then pull those things off and do the aesthetic uh, restorations of them, put them back on. So two, uh, two Jags, um, these have been long-term builds in here. You've probably seen them in, in previous videos. Uh, this E-type is essentially uh, done, obviously, with the exception of the top. And the reason we're sitting here waiting is, is availability of materials. It's something uh, that, uh, as a result of the pandemic and supply issues, certain things just aren't available. And it's somewhat random um, what is not available. And the blue stay fast material that we need for this top we can't get or struck we can find a little but not enough um so that's the net result of the pandemic on on builds is that you'll get to a moment where you just can't get it um we, you know owner wants the dark blue top doesn't want black um so we're kind of stuck the car's done um that's how it is XK140 um, is being assembled now. Uh, obviously, a lot farther to go uh, on that one, uh, but it's uh, it's coming. The Aston DB5. Um, this uh, really came to us as it just wasn't running well. Um, and this car was modified in the UK. Uh, engine was uh, built, uh, uh, punched out to five liters, and and uh, upgraded. I think it's suspension and brakes and a few other things. Uh, it's a nice car. Um, I'm not keen on the flares, uh, but um, it is a it's, it's a nice car. We ended up going through all three Webers and doing full builds on the Webers um, and correcting the ignition system. And we've got it running now, so we're just going to have a little bit of tuning to do, and then we'll go put it on the rolling road dyno and run it in and make sure we've got uh, it's doing what it's supposed to, both on timing and uh, fuel. Um, but so far, it's looking pretty good. Uh, this is a uh, transaxle uh, from a uh, Lancia B20 Aurelia. Um, we're just about uh, through it, and um, just a refresh. The it's a go, goes in a car that's a coach built car, um, and the motor's being done, the transmission's being done, and then eventually the car will come down to us and we'll install everything. Uh, this is a Aston uh, two four. Um, just some finished work up front. We didn't restore this car. We just redid the front end, um, <laughs> waiting for parts again. Um, it's just one of those things right now. We get stalled on projects waiting for parts. It's just the nature of things at the moment. It's almost done. Um, just a couple little uh, items to go. Uh, Triumph TR3, this is one you've probably seen on previous videos that we uh, finished the restoration. Uh, the customer had it over the driving season and got some miles on it. Um, ended up with a transmission problem, nothing large. Transmission's out, it's on the bench. Uh, Got to correct a couple things in there and then uh, that'll go back in. 
But the driving season's over now, so no rush on that. This uh, E-Type is a, it's a Series 2 E-Type. Um, and this uh, this is just a refresh. It was, a, a yet again, uh, a car that got left in the garage uh, for way too long. And who knows what happened. The motor was stuck when it came to us. Who knows what happened, what took it down originally, and it got parked, but it's very common. Uh, anyway, they want the car back, so um, the engine is out. We're building that. We're building the trans. Um, and we have painted the, uh, just from here forward, um, we'll polish this paint out here, but <clears throat> all that just to accommodate the mechanical, so brake system, fuel system, all that, all that kind of standard stuff of a car that's been sitting problem was is that we got into the front end here and realized that the superstructure up front was bent. The car had been hunted in the front at once in its life and um, the superstructure was tweaked and cracked and several, it was unsafe. So, you know, your, your choices are to completely repair it, um, which is really laborious, uh, or buy new ones, you know, which is what we've done. That's what these are here. There's no interior in here, so <laughs> these are sitting in here. Um, the challenge then with buying new is fitment. And so we now have to mount this superstructure onto the car and fit it to an existing body and bonnet, which can be tricky. So um, what you don't want to do is get into a situation where you have to paint things because you have to do body work. So hopefully it all works out. It's a little bit tricky doing this. This is kind of the core issues with E-types and, and setting them up is that superstructure versus the bonnet. It's, it's a giant chunk of body work that's all pivoted from two points and it all has to line up to get a nice even line here. So that's the challenge now as we'll go back in with new uh, superstructure and um, make sure everything aligns. Wasn't part of the uh, original scope. Um, we didn't expect to find that. But that's what happens on vintage cars. You do find things uh, and you have to deal with them. And in this case, clearly the car had been punted and poorly repaired uh, and it was structurally unsafe. So there's, there's just no way to get beyond that. <clears throat> uh, this is a uh, Sunbeam Tiger. Uh, it is a real one. Uh, this uh, has been painted uh, it's a light restoration i guess i would uh, i would call it it's uh, it's not a uh, a full full deal um uh, but we've we've done the body we are doing the engine um and so some things are being restored some not um and this is just you know uh, at the request of the customer kind of to upgrade this car they've had it for a long time and and it kind of had gotten dowdy and uh, certainly uh not dependable anymore. And so they wanted to uh, do enough of it to make it so they could have fun with it and it would look good. Um, they did choose to go with the LT uh, fiberglass hood. Um, not my favorite, um, but a lot of folks like them. But so we've got that. They are a giant pain in the butt to fit because the fiberglass hoods are often not in good shape. As, and I don't mean from a quality point of view, but from a the actual shape. Um, and so you have to fit them to the car, uh, which can, it just takes a lot of hours. Anyway, that one's coming together. A little A30. Um, kind of, these are actually cool little cars. They're goofy looking, but they're kind of cool. Customer wants to leave this one uh, exterior just the way it is. It's certainly rough. Well, it's not rough. It's just, you know, it could be prettier. Uh, but it's Got some patina to it and just leave it like it is. The interior was a, a real disaster, um, but we are doing a full interior on it. So you can kind of see the, the carpets cut correctly um, in the British style, uh, door panels and seats. So um, it'll have a very, it'll have a very uh, nice interior. Um, whether or not he paints it, I don't know. I think his plan is to kind of I'll leave it. This is a uh, uh, an Abart uh, OT1000. This is a actual uh, real one. This is an Abart. Um, 
These were the, in normal, would have been an 850 Spider, and this is a slope headlight or the Mira headlight car. So these are rare even in Fiat form, uh, even more rare in Abarth form. The one liter engine is out and should have been in the car long ago, um, but we have been stuck waiting on certain parts uh, for the engine. Um, and again, it's just the result of the pandemic. This has slowed us down. Everything else is, is near done. Uh, they're working on the uh, convertible top now. Uh, you can see the dash is done uh, already. These, um, these tops uh, are, are this very typical uh, Italian style uh, top out of this era with the cable uh, pulls, which actually makes a really uh, tidy looking top when you get, have this cable tension through it, makes it uh, tighter, which is harder to do than like some of the British ones that don't have that. So these are actually pretty uh, pretty good quality tops um, and a hell of a lot better than some of their contemporaries in that period. So this one also has a complete hard top, which you can see over here uh, on the upholstery bench. Let me look at that real quick. So these are interesting tops and they're really high quality and they were quite involved in how they integrate with the car, the bodywork on the car um, This with a, with a high-end uh, headliner. So, you know, some of the British stuff and other things would have had no headliner if they had a hard top option or, or pretty uh, minimal. This is actually out of metal. This is a, a steel top, nicely done on the interior um, headliner and um, the way it fits onto the onto the body makes for a really integrated look. Um, for inex these were inexpensive little sports cars, uh, but they were actually uh, well built. I mean, I know there's, uh, especially in America, there's the whole Fiat thing that they were junk or this, that, the other thing. Um, mostly they were just misunderstood. They were actually, uh, for the price point, actually really well built. The the big fault on these early 850s, uh, the Spiders, was um, that they that was the cross member under the car and um, the way that it was supported structurally. And there were a lot of them that were sold onto the East Coast and that rusted and it weakened the car. And a lot of them were destroyed because of that. So it would have been something relatively easy to fix, but a lot of them did not survive because of that one basic flaw. It's something that can easily become uh, overcome now, but um, meanwhile, most of these are lost. This is a uh, Albart uh, double bubble, and we're in the process of doing the interior. This is not our build. Um, this is a friend of mine from uh, down in California. And several people have worked on this car over uh, a lot of years of the restoration, and it needs an interior now. Uh, it's missing a lot of its pieces, uh, and that's what Ernie now is working through is uh, creating those and doing the interior on this one. Uh, not our normal thing. Um, this is a little Honda CVCC, and um, this is a, a one of our local customers. And this this is a survivor. It's very low miles, and it's just pristine. Um, it's untouched, and you know, these were very inexpensive little commuter cars, and most of them just were driven into the ground because they were pretty damn dependable, and end up with a million miles and gone and. It's just really weird and rare to find one that has no miles on it. Um, so it had been sitting for a while. So we're just recommissioning it, uh, getting it uh, back on the road again. It just sat for uh, too long. Um, but it, I love this kind of stuff. It's just whatever the car is. I don't care where it came from. But one that's just this weird little time capsule. Um, you kind of get it to ex experience what they were when they were, were new because they're kind of just untouched. So pretty cool. So this is a Saab Sonnet. Um, this is uh, certainly not a restoration. We've done a bunch of work on this car uh, just to make it road safe. And um, I think we're almost there. They're actually pretty cool little cars. Um, 
aesthetically, uh, I have trouble with them, but um, they're actually pretty cool little cars if you if you study them a little bit. Um, they are putting a rear glass um, replacing the seal, and they've got it in and. These are just notorious. This glass is unavailable. It's very difficult to get in and um, you know, just scary. And if you're, you know, in these old cars, the all the um, glass is all roped in and um, on something that's difficult to fit. I mean, this thing damn near turns 90 degrees on both sides. And so you have a, a lot of converging angles trying to get it down in there. And, and you're putting stress on the glass while you're doing it. So really scary um, and risky things to do, but what we do. Anyway, they've got it. Um, so just the, letting it dry right now. MG Magnet. Um, this is one that we got done for the driving season uh, and finished the car. Got some miles on it. And it's back now. Driving season's over, and we got a couple things to to fix. Um, we had a leak on the on the rear main. Unfortunately, the engine had to come out, fix that, go back. Um, it happens. Uh, so we run our engines in on on a engine dyno uh, before they go in, and that that gets us 95% of the way there. But you know, if if once you get a lot of miles, well, at least a few a few miles on a car, things can evolve and uh, it, it happens. You just have to address it. So anyway, it's all back together now, um, and I think it's just about ready. Um, this is a. The magnets are really cool. They're kind of to me. They're kind of like a a, a Jag Mark II. Um, obviously smaller, less power, uh, but really pretty elegant. I actually like the interiors on a magnet more than I do a Mark II. Um, I think they're cleaner. There's some plastic on there, but just I like the the, the doors, the door pools, um, the wood dash. They're really pretty elegant interiors for um, for what was a much less expensive uh, sedan than a, uh, like a Jag or or a Contemporary. Um, we did the do the dash on this one. It um, there there. there are, they're difficult. There's a lot of wood in this car, uh, just like on a Mark II, um, and it's very expensive to do uh, and get it right. Uh, a, a lot of effort, and so it's just about there. A little few things to left to do on the steering wheel and a couple things to sort out, but it's got miles on it now. It's a runner. It's, it it it's, feels awesome on the road. Um, nice driving little cars. I really do like these. Uh, last is my build here, uh, the Jaguar XJ Coupe. Um, moving ahead on it. Um, this is my build. This is not a customer build, so it certainly happens in spurts when I have time. Uh, so you'll you'll see this car kind of uh, make a lot of progress and then no progress, and time will go by. But that's that's the nature of an in-house build that uh, is really an an experiment for us. I think that's it. Uh, that's the shop. Um, there are several. Cars. We have a whole other warehouse where there are other cars that move in and out uh, as they're being worked on here, waiting for parts and whatnot. So uh, there's quite a few cars that aren't, aren't in the working uh, area at any one time. So we will see that change. So thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.